All righty. Hello and welcome everybody to this fantastic dinosaur chat. It's not about a dinosaur. It's about a, a hornet queen, a buzzing, potential, massive, well, not a massive creature. It costs quite a bit, but it makes a swarm of flying death touch insects. And that is an angle that I'm looking to clear up in my stampede dinos list. It can make a lot of mana when there's a creature that costs seven, hmm, hmm, what does it achieve? Dinosaurs, as I pretty much always play here on the channel, they don't have a lot of reach. Some of them do, but flying creatures can get me caught out. And Death Touch in particular, being able to trade with any creature is quite fantastic indeed. It could be anything from the Crackling Drake in Is It Phoenix, not super common, Arclight Phoenix itself, Ledger Shredder is also quite big, or Atraxa in any variation of Transmogrify decks. But also, just against aggro, it's not always fast enough, and the way I love to play dinosaurs, Stampede Dinos, not a lot of early creatures, I can lose to aggro more often than not. But you can't do this to me. That's okay. Chances are you can't be good against everything, but the Hornet Queen does help me be a little bit better against those decks. Like I mentioned, it doesn't always land early enough, but if it does, if the opponent has got me down to five or six, somewhere in that range, potentially I have now five blocking creatures. They all have a death touch. The opponent is not going to want to attack into that some of their creatures might have trample and whatnot of course the slick shot show off and gruel atarka whatever you want to call it prowess as painful oftentimes that gets trample with the monstrous rage and then it leaves trample on it very painful but again not always trample big creatures boom death touch my little insects they trade with it Oh, and I don't really lose anything. I can make the seven mana needed for the Hornet Queen quite easily, as some of you may have witnessed. If you haven't, check it out. I'm recording this and a couple other videos just because I'm taking a break from streaming for a couple days. It is a long weekend coming up in Canada here, maybe the States as well. But I just wanted to get my current thoughts out about the Hornet Queen. It's... I, I think it's one of the best options. Oftentimes, I can make seven mana on turn four with Sunken Citadel, sometimes two Sunken Citadels, Castle Garenbrig, and a forest. Maybe two other forests. Mix it in there. But the point is, seven mana on turn four is not unheard of, and it's fairly consistent. Seven mana on turn four may not be fast enough, but oftentimes it is, and then I play it, and I don't have to worry about flying creatures. The opponent might have a little bit of single target removal, but with a swarm, five creatures in one, there's still going to be some left behind. Fiery Impulse, Fatal Push, potentially something is still there. At the very least, maybe it stops Shieldred, the Apocalypse, from attacking into us. Although Shieldred, the Apocalypse, is not super popular at the moment but you get the idea a big nasty scary creature that happens to have death touch itself and then it would just get blocked by a 1-1 death touch that feels pretty darn bad oh i'm going to continue using it i think it may be the best option for me if i can make its mana value its converted mana cost as early as turn four i don't see too much else that would allow me to potentially take out multiple creatures and just buy me time. Oftentimes, that is the big thing. If I buy myself a few more turns, I get to the big heavy hitters, and then I kill in one turn, as is often the case. Right, leave it there for now. Make sure you look out for the next ones that I'm recording, or just look at the over, I don't know, 500 live streams so far. A lot of them is Stampede Dinos. It's definitely my favorite way to play. Take a big bite out of that like button. See you next time. Peace.